Hello everyone, I am Nagashri. Welcome to my Civil Engineering YouTube channel. If this is your first time, please hit the subscribe button and also notification bell to get notified when I post my new video. Today, I will be discussing regarding load transfer mechanism, load path, types of load path, pattern of load transfer in different load path. So, coming on to the first concept of this lecture series that is load transfer mechanism. So what is a load transfer mechanism? Load transfer mechanism is nothing but the process followed by the process followed by transfer of exposed load from one structural element to the other structural element is called as load transfer mechanism. I repeat it. The process of transfer of exposed load from one structural element to the other structural element effectively is called as load transfer mechanism. So load transfer mechanism basically depends on the elements on which load transfer or it also depends on it also depends on the direction on which it transfers so the direction of which the load is transferred to the connecting members is called as load path load path is nothing but the path followed by the load during its transfer to the connecting members the next important point is that Pattern of load transfer process basically depends on two major factors. So first one is type of load and second one is the load path. So you have studied regarding the type of load. So there are various types of load that is dead load, live load, seismic load, wind load etc. So load path it is just now I have discussed it. And there are two base generally there are two different types of load path so it is gravity load path and second is lateral load path so coming on to the first type of load path it is gravity load path so what is a gravity load path so gravity load path is nothing but the vir vertical gravity load it is a vertical gravity load which is inclusive of which is inclusive of dead load on the structure dead load of the structure which is including of dead load of the structure and live load coming on the structure i repeat it it is the type of load path in which the vertical load which is inclusive of dead load of the structure and live load on the structure which is collectively acting on a slab and if it is effectively transferred to the beams and from the beams it is transferred to columns and from the columns it is transferred to supports and finally from the supports it is transferred to the underlying earth so it is neatly represented in the sketch below coming on to the next concept that is the pattern of low transfer in the gravity load path so the load transfer as I said that as in case of gravity load path the load is first coming on to the slab so that is nothing but the live load so from the slab it will be transferred to beam so let us see how the load pattern which is followed when it is transferred from slab to beam so basically Generally, there will be tra trapezoidal or triangular pattern which is followed during the transfer of load from slab to beam and additionally there will be creation of torsional movements and additionally there will be creation of torsional movements at the beam at its ends. So I just repeated during the transfer of load from beam to column the path or the pattern which is followed will be always 
triangular or trapezoidal in shape and there will be creation of additional torsional movement on the beam at its ends. Next, let us see how the load will be transferred from beam to column. So, whenever the loads is received by the, uh, by the beams from the slabs, there at the joint there will be the bending causing, uh, I mean at the, at the joints there will be bending of the beam which results in formation of three reaction at the ends. So one in the vertical direction, so it acts as a axial load on the neighboring column. So next one is in the horizontal direction, it acts as a shear on the neighboring column and the third one is the moment at the end of the beam which acts as a bending moment on the neighboring column. I just repeated, whenever there is a transfer of load from the beam to column, from the beam to column, then the loads which are received from the slab to the beam at the joints between slab and beam, there will be bending moment at the beam, there will be causing, I mean there will be caused with the bending at the beam and which results in three reaction at the end position. So first one is the first one is the axial load which is in vertical direction and second one in the horizontal direction and that is nothing but the shear force and third one is a moment at the end of the beam uh, which acts as a bending moment on the neighboring column. So the next the last path that is the load transferred from column to foundation here from the column to foundation the loads on the column will be transferred to support first efficiently and further it is transferred to the foundation soil the structure can be said to be stable if the upward pressure by the foundation soil is equally resisted by the load on the structure. Next, coming on to the next type of the load path that is the lateral load path. So in this type of load path, so lateral load path, in this type of load path, the lateral loads which are also called as earthquake loads and the wind loads are transferred effi efficiently through the building. The components of the lateral load paths are vertical components and horizontal components. So here the horizontal components includes roof, floors and foundations and vertical components includes shear wall and frames. So here have shown diagrammatically. So you just you can just observe here. So from the roof that is from the horizontal component that is marked as 1 so it, it will be transferred to the vertical that is marked as 2 that is a vertical component that is to the shear wall and the frames. So next coming on to the next concept that is pattern of load transfer in case of lateral load. So as in case of lateral load roof and floors transfer the load to the shear walls. So here the roof and floors are also called as diaphorms. It will be efficiently transferring loads to the shear walls and here shear walls are also termed as primary load resisting elements. Primary load resisting elements. So next, so shear walls can also resist the gravity loads efficiently and further it transfers the collective load to the foundation and in turn the foundation transfer the load of all the stories to the underlying soil. So I just repeat, so here in case of lateral load path, the pattern followed in the lateral load path, the roof and floors transfers the load to the shear walls. So here the roof and floors are called as diaphorms and shear walls are also called as primary load resisting members and the 
shear walls transverse the collective load to the foundation and in turn the foundation collects the load from all the stories and then it transfers to the underlying soil thanks for watching see you next time